In this tutorial, you'll be learning how to make a fascinator using the crino line. All over the world, no one looks like you. You can put a smile on your face. You're beautiful. You're beautiful. To make this fascinator, you'll be needing a crino line, bias, gum, matching color of thread. Your needle, scissors, feathers, wording, fabric, and your tape roll. Hi everyone, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So, like I said earlier, we've been learning how to make a fascinator using the crinoline. And so, what I'm doing now is I'm securing the edge of the crinoline so that it will not lose. So, I'm using my thread to secure properly. You know, you can also use your fishing line. But I decided to use a thread because at the time of this, while I was making this, I didn't have a fishing at all. Like, say, my fishing like got exhausted. Okay, so I'm just using the matches. I like to just burn the edges so that it won't lose. And so, what I'm doing now is to sew with my needle and thread, like so. I'm going to sew down like that all through till I'm finished. I finish so. I actually use 1.5 yards for this you know, line. You can go to the beginning of this video to check the dimensions. Please do not forget to subscribe to my channel and for all new subscribers or if you are a first time viewer, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. You are in for a nice time. I promise you that. So this is a big crino line right is wide is the widest you know line I know okay and the dimension is at the beginning of this video All right so I'm just showing you my needle and thread is about seven inches of width yeah I think about seven inches of width okay so I'm sewing I'm still sewing with my needle and thread And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drag it so that it will form that curve. But I'm doing this to know if what I'm doing is okay. So I'm just trying to test to see what I'm doing. If it's okay. I'm test running actually. Right. So I can see it's okay. So I'll keep doing it till, you know, I used 1.5 yards for this particular rose I'm doing in length. 1.5 yards in length. I'm going to drag it, drag the thread, right? And I'm also going to secure the edges like I did at the beginning. I decided to use this color of crinoline because when I went to my vendor i loved the color i loved the mixture so i decided to pick it you can use any color you like and it also come out beautiful so i'm just going to form my rose design now that I'm taking it one step after the other it's very simple can you see that and I'm going to secure so that it can stay together in one place
you have to do this very carefully otherwise the roses will lose so you have to secure properly so we have to secure tightly like so I'm just trying to make sure it's well arranged so I'm just doing it very well and so we have our rose it's beautiful really Right, so I'm just going to keep aside and I'm going to take the remaining one and a half yards and I'm going to I'm securing that because I want to remove the thread I'm also going to secure the edges of that And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply my gum to the edges of the crinoline, line and I'm going to gum together like so. If you have your maybe glue gum you can also achieve that or well, I prefer using this gum for this because it's lighter than glue gum the glue gum is heavier the glue gum has what it's good for and I actually love the glue gum too but it depends on what I'm doing You can see that make sure you do it neatly to have a neat job. So I'm going to use my bias. If you don't have a bias, you can use a ribbon or any fabric of your choice. But I prefer your bias. And I'm just going to gum the bias. You know the bias is it's divided in the middle. So I'm just going to place the middle of it and I'm going to cover up. I'm going to cover up that crinoline line like so. So I'm just applying my gum gradually. So you want to do it little by little so that it can be neat. I keep stressing the word neat because you don't want to do a rough work. Even though this fascinator is for me, I just wanted to do something I'm going to use on Saturday. Still I want a neat job. Because it's what people see. We admire. If I do a rough job for myself, they will believe that I make rough jobs. <laughs> okay, so you get the gist. So I'm just going to use the bias like so. I will soon be true with it now. There are some places that the gum didn't close up very well.
I'm just going to trim off the excess bias and I'm going to secure the edges. If you have anything you want me to give you a tutorial on, please don't forget to call my attention to it. I'll promise to check and do the tutorial. Okay, so I'm working on my second crinoline line now. This particular crinoline line is smaller than the one I started with. It's about 3 inches width. Yes, about 3 inches width. And it's 1 yard length and so i'm also doing what i've just finished doing i'm securing the edges and i'm also making a crinoline flower like i started with so i'm also going to sew if you remember how i did the bigger one that's exactly what i'm doing So I'm just going to draw, pull the thread so to come together so it came together like this and just like I did, I'm still securing the edges so just like I did to that bigger crinoline, line, I'm also going to make a rose out of this by twisting it like so. a cone line you pull it to form like a cone and you keep following the pattern like so you see I'm going to put it inside a bigger one so I'm also going to finish up by making sure that they stay together so I'm just using my needle and thread like so and when i'm done doing that when i feel it's tight enough i'm just going to add can you see how beautiful it looks but before doing that i'm going to add my gum you can use a glue gum for this i love using glue for this kind of thing now because it will stick very well see that so I'm just going to draw tightly and once again I'm going to secure I'm just trying to arrange it to make sure it sits well see how beautiful it looks it looks finer you can use anything to finish up the middle part you can put a bead inside a big bead to make it look finer whatever you desire and so our rose is ready it's fine it's beautiful and I'm going to just cut off the thread so our rose is beautiful and I'm just going to keep aside so I'm bringing back the crino line I used the bias for and I'm just stitching the two edges together like so and I'm forming this pattern look at what I did I just folded it to the middle I'm going to open it again so that you will see what I'm doing look at it can you see that I'm just folding and I'm putting in the middle I'm putting in the middle like so and I'm going to use the mini bias stripe. You can also use the thread to just tie it together so that that place can be firm. Right? Like I said, you can use a thread, it doesn't have to be the bias stripe. I'm just tying the middle together so that it can be firm. I'm still securing with my thread and needle. 
because I don't want it to get loose along the way. I'm just trying to arrange it. And I'm putting my rose like so. Can you see that? So I just want to uh, to add gum, a little gum before placing it, even though I'm still going to use my needle and thread. Whatever you do, be mindful that you don't want something that will pull off. So you have to do something very tight. Alright, so we have a rose almost set. So I have some feathers there. So you can put as many feathers as you want. But I'm just okay with little feathers. So I put a little gum where I want them to stay. And I'm just fixing them there. The gum will make it secure. And see what I'm doing. Do whatever design that suits you. But I felt that was the best position. I can put them. See how beautiful it looks. So I'm going to put on my head now. But before that, I have wadding. That's a small piece of wadding I cut off from that larger one. It, I measured 1.5 inches by 1.5 inches and I'm just going to make something circular out of it. Okay, so I'm also So I'm also going to put a matching color fabric to cover up that wooden since it's white in color. So I apply the gum. I'm just going to put it on the fabric and trimming of the excess. I'm also going to apply a gum on it, some of the gum spilled, so I'm just making use of it. So I'm closing up like so. I'm still going to apply my gum. I'm actually doing this to cover up that stitched part, that rough edge, and the fascinator, you see? And so that I can have an interface to gum the headband. That is why I'm doing what I did. Majorly is to provide an interface. So that is where I want the fascinator to be attached. And so I'm just going to put together blow dry so that it can be tightly secured. See how beautiful our personator looks? It is so beautiful. I hope you'll be trying yours out. Kindly send pictures to me. Let me see the outcome of yours. I will drop my WhatsApp number. Alright, see you in my next tutorial. Thank you for watching.